Michael Weber, Artistic Director of Chicago's Porchlight Music Theater. Today we have a special edition of Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio with our guest, actor, storyteller, and co-artistic director of the Midnight Circus, Mitchell Fain, joining us from Rhode Island. Hello, Mitchell. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me. Let's start with a little background on today's musical. With music by George Gershwin, lyrics by Ira Gershwin, and a satirical book by George S. Kaufman, Strike Up the Band began previews in Philadelphia in 1927 with its eye toward New York. That Broadway opening at the Times Square Theater eventually came, three years later, on January 14, 1930, after a thorough script overhaul by comedy writer Maury Riskind. You see, those previews in Philadelphia were disastrous, and were what prompted Kaufman's famous quote, Satire is what closes on Saturday night. A commentary on war profiteering, the original story centered on a cheese tycoon who tries to maintain his monopoly on the American market by convincing the United States government to declare war on Switzerland. Coming from the author of You Can't Take It With You and The Man Who Came to Dinner, it was very funny, but a bit too darkly political for audiences in the early days of the Depression. A revised 1930 plot by Riskin softened the political overtones, increased the emphasis on romance, and added a happy ending. It relegated the war plot to a dream sequence and changed the fight over cheese to a fight over chocolate. As often happens with Hollywood transfers of Broadway musicals, changes are made, and in the case of Strike Up the Band, MGM made a lot of them. Designed as a follow-up to the successful film adaptation of Broadway's Babes in Arms, which itself was severely altered in both plot and songs, MGM reteamed young Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland in another Hey, Let's Put On a Show romp under the direction of Busby Berkeley. Supplementing the Gershwin's title song with tunes by Roger Edens and Arthur Freed, the film became a smash and the stars were cemented into the history of the American film musical. So Mitchell, what yeah. happened to this Broadway musical? Wow. Well, I do think you're right that it was too dark. It reminds me a little bit of why uh, the original production of Chicago was not successful mm -hmm. because it was too cynical right past the Nixon uh, whole debacle and America wanted Annie. I mean, they wanted something else. Mm -hmm. And what they, what the movie musical gave them was the equivalent of Annie, right? It's mm -hmm. if, if Kaufman wrote a satirical uh, a pointed uh, play about, uh, you know, capitalism and, and all that kind of thing, this musical that they turned it into, into a film is literally the opposite of satirical. It's schmaltzy as schmaltz goes. And I, I think the country just needed something else. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, it sounds, and what they needed was, it, was this, these two personalities. <laughs> yes. And, and we, you know, when, when specifically with, with Judy Garland, and of course with Mickey Rooney as such a storied career, but, but take us to this moment in their careers. Mm -hmm. um, wh wh where were they in terms of, of building their uh legend that we now know that where did this come well both of them started in vaudeville so those these two kids by this point mickey's a little bit older judy i think was 18 when they filmed this and they were both seasoned pros by this point and mickey was by far the bigger movie star when you watch this movie you realize how much judy is relegated to um second banana even though her name is in the billing it's really it's mostly a showcase for mickey rooney um, she had done The Wizard of Oz, and like most people know, it was not an immediate success. Uh, it made a lot of publicity, and it made her very famous, but it wasn't a huge uh, cultural, uh, you know, atom bomb that we now know it as that came with time. And so they were both the up-and-coming favorite kids, right? I think about how much great music is being made by kids today, right? The, the Demi Lovato's and the Ariana Grande's and the Nick Jonas's. And that's in context who Mickey and Judy were. They were so beloved and America needed to see these super talented kids in the context of success. I think we, we needed it in the same way a generation before uh, they needed Shirley Temple. Mm -hmm. So I think the, 
Mickey was a huge star. Judy was on her way. And they were truly beloved, like the pop stars of the day. Mm -hmm. Particularly, it was like if, uh, you know, if Ariana Grande mm -hmm. was, uh, was also in MGM movies, she was this young pop star, America's sweetheart. Right. That's what they were when this movie was made. Right. And being that this came after Babes in Arms, it was sort of then the establishment of a, almost a series, correct? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, I'm trying to think of, I was trying to think of the equivalent now of a series of films with basically the same plot uh, that gets repeated over and over again with the same stars. And I don't, I mean, I, the only ones I can think of are like the Marvel movies, only because they're so popular and they're exactly what people want to see right now. Uh, like the series of, of those actors and those characters coming back. Um, is, or maybe is really High School Musical, perhaps, something like, like that, High School Musical. Uh, exactly. Yeah. The high School Musical, something that is so pleasurable, and we, we keep seeing them over and over again, and we want to see them. And it's so they're so filled with everything that was popular then, right? Swing music and um, clean-cut teens and schmaltz and mom and patriotism. And uh, it, it's so, like, ripe with schmaltz and patriotism and uh, Americana. And I... I I think it's it plays into the same the same things that we look for now when we're looking for the most popular entertainment and what trope we want. Right, and and as far as musicals go and transferring musicals, one of the the unfortunate parts, but but fortunate in a different way, was that a lot of the Gershwin music was removed yeah. and they wrote a new score for, yeah. for this. That um, is unfortunate because really the only time Judy gets to really shine, she has one. In the film, anyway, she has, um, uh, I believe it's also in the radio show, uh, she has that one um, sort of comic song about uh, how the, she, she has no luck with guys. Right. And it's interesting that Garland only gets really that much to, to shine. In retrospect, when we know, and they knew how talented she was, it, it, it doubles down on the fact that it's really Mickey Rooney's movie. Right, right. Well. Yeah. It's uh, they, they were they were an incredible pair and uh, and and they really shine not only in the film but uh, we'll we'll talk about it afterwards but they really shine and it's, it's so interesting to hear them live with each other just connecting and their chemistry and the effect they have on this uh, this live audience that we're about to see. There will be more on this program following the performance, but now here on the October 28th, 1940 episode of the Lux Radio Theater are Mickey Rooney as Jimmy Connors, Judy Garland as Mary Holden, with John Scott Trotter as Paul Whiteman in Strike Up the Band. Lux presents Hollywood. Radio Theater brings you Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland in Strike Up the Band with John Scott Trotter. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, because even though I'm in New York, our play comes to you from the stage of the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood as usual. And rumor reaches me all the way across the country that the Lux Radio Theater was a far from quiet place this week. The rafters haven't been ringing, they've been shouting. And the reason is the two stars who are making their first appearance at our microphone tonight, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland. Wherever these two are concerned, there's a cheerful whirlwind of action, songs, and comedy. And that's the mood of our play tonight. It's Strike Up the Band, the new MGM picture starring Mickey and Judy, which is currently adding a new success to their record. In Strike Up the Band... Mickey goes into the music business and organizes a band, a dance orchestra, specializing in what I believe is known as jive. Judy is the singer in Mickey's orchestra who wishes that her hero would spend less time with his drums and more with her. And if some of you who have high school sons and daughters think you hear familiar scenes tonight, we'll consider that a tribute to the success of our play and stars. During my trip across the country with Gary Cooper, traveling the trail of our Northwest Mounted Police, I talked to many of you and heard your comments about this theater. And I was interested in hearing from you the kind of plays you want. Of course, you will have to admit that you don't all agree on that. 
But on another subject, there was no disagreement whatever. That subject was Lux Toilet Soap. In every city, I heard the same welcome words of praise for our product. You gave me an even greater vision of what this theater means to you and a renewed feeling of pride in our product. I believe that loveliness is the essence of charm. And loveliness implies Lux Soap. As a matter of fact, the young lady who had traveled halfway across Illinois to go to the premiere of Northwest Mounted Police told me she'd go just as far to buy Lux Toilet Soap if she couldn't get it any nearer home, which, of course, she could. Now, with a twist of a switch, we take you back to the stage of the Lux Radio Theater in Hollywood, where my brother, William C. DeMille, is acting as producer this week. Bill, take over, will you? Well, I'll try. Ladies and gentlemen, the last time I went to bat for Cecil was about 30 years ago. He was starring in a play up in Canada. And believe it or not, he got the mumps. I rushed up and played the part for a week to keep the company going. And now tonight's company is ready to entertain you as the curtain rises on the first act of our play, starring Mickey Rooney as Jimmy Connors and Judy Garland as Mary Holden with John Scott Trotter as Paul Whiteman and Louis Silver's orchestra portraying the part of Paul Whiteman's orchestra. And now, Mr. Bandmaster, if you please, strike up the band. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the music you're now hearing comes from the gymnasium of Riverwood High School, where it is played flawlessly by the boys of the school band. Well, uh, not quite flawlessly. For the boys have been wrestling with this tune for two hours, and they might be getting a little stale. Yes, they are stale. The tuba is weary, and the trombone is bored, and on the traps, young Jimmy Connors beats out a sad tattoo. Even the bandmaster, a spinster music teacher, can find no joy in her chosen work. This is not a swing orchestra, and you're not Cab Calloway. Yes, ma'am. How do you expect to give a band concert? Do you realize that... Oh, what's the use? You can all go home. Rehearsal dismissed. Boy, what a session. Yeah, you want to stick around, Phil? We can play some hot records. I'd like to, Jimmy, but the last time we did that, I didn't get home until 12. And my dad was pretty burned up. Oh, we're only practicing. Yeah, but my folks think I practice better at home. Anyway, Annie's waiting for me. Annie? <laughs> You're dead. Yeah. Be seeing you, Jimmy. All right. Hey, Booper, how about you? Would you like to try a little classical swing, huh? Can't do it, Jimmy. My family's out of sympathy with these late sessions we've been having. See you tomorrow, Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy? Is that you, Jimmy? Huh? Oh, oh, uh... Yes, Mom, it's me. Are you just getting home? What time is it, dear? Uh, gosh, Mom, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of late. Must be close to 11. Our clock seems to be fast. Good night, Jimmy. Good night, Mom. Hiya, Mary. How am I doing? Hey, hey, Mary, come here. I got something to tell you. Say, have you got an option on this gymnasium? This place is supposed to be for exercise. Oh, I got enough muscles. Look, Mary, you know, I don't go around steaming people up. Oh, no, of well, course not. You remember one time I told you that someday we're going to have a dance orchestra? Yes. Well, the dog is barking. What do you mean? Well, look at Mary, I've been thinking it over in my mind, and, well, a fellow doesn't want to play in a broken-down brass band anymore. He gets tired of that. So instead of the school having a band that plays a concert once a year, we can have a swell modern dance orchestra. Got everything we need, a brass section, piano, reeds, and you. And... Me? Well, sure, you'd handle all the vocals. Oh, that sounds wonderful, Jimmy. It is wonderful. We could make our own arrangements and specialties and play for all the dances. Uh, say, do you think we could sell the idea to Mr. Judd? Mr. Judd, the principal? Oh, I thought the last time you saw uh, him... Uh... Yeah, 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 but I don't think he'd hold my past against me. Th this is something pretty big. Would you go down to see him with me? Say, say, maybe tonight? Sure, Jimmy, I'll go. Oh, it's a date. What time? Oh, right after dinner. Say, 7 o'clock. 
I told Mother about the band, Jimmy, and she thinks it's wonderful. Yeah? She says to tell you good luck with Mr. Judd. What'd your mother say? Uh, my mother? Well, oh, nothing. You see, I didn't tell her. You didn't tell her? Why? Mm, well, I guess I'm afraid to. Afraid to tell your mother? Mary, it isn't as easy as you think. It's not just telling her that we're going to have a band. I've got to tell her, well, I've got to tell her that this is it. Music, it's my future. It's the thing I want most. Oh, well, she'd understand. No, I don't think she would. She wants me to be a doctor like Dad was. But, Mary, look at me. Do I look like a doctor? No, I guess you don't. And of course I don't, but ever since I can remember, she's always talked to me about it, and that's why she's been working in that store all these years for me. Well, Jimmy, are you sure you want to be a drummer? Mary, I was never more sure of anything in my life. Well, go to her and tell her that. She'll understand, because she'll realize that your ambition is strong and sincere. Mothers are like that, Jimmy. Gee, I, I, I never thought of it that way before, but, but you're right, Mary. Oh, you know, you're so wonderful. Gosh, it's a great <laughs> comfort to have somebody you can tell your troubles to. It. Oh, you always have such a wonderful way of putting me on the right track. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you know, you're, you're going to make some man a fine wife. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm going to envy the guy that gets you too. Yeah. Yeah. And and Mary, I'll I'll never forget what a great pal you've been to me. Yeah. 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 Straight from the shoulder, a real pal. Reminds me of a song. What song? Oh, what a pal was Mary. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> uh, yeah. Come on, we'll be late. And that's the idea, Mr. Judd. You see, the band as it's organized is strictly no good. So my idea wait, is... Wait, please, it... wait. <laughs> take it easy, Jimmy. Go ahead, Mr. Judd. Thank you, Mary. Jimmy, as I understand it, you want to form an orchestra and give a school dance instead of our regular band concert. Yes, sir. And not only will we have a great dance orchestra, Mr. Judd, but <laughs> we'll also have a great singer, too. Really? <laughs> I guess he means me. I see. And you're going to arrange for the whole thing, Jimmy? Yes, sir. Publicity, selling tickets, paying off the debt of the band, the whole thing, all in three weeks? In a breeze. In a breeze. Well, you've taken on a pretty large order, Jimmy, and I, I don't believe you can do it. But I'll buy the first ticket. Oh, gee, that's great. <laughs> Good night, Jimmy. And all the luck in the world. Here's my hand on Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, oh my gosh, Mary. The principal shook hands with me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, we certainly slipped it to him, all right. We certainly did. Oh, there's a great old yeah, guy. He's a great old guy. Come on in the house a minute. Vision, that's what he's got. Why, there's a man that can see over the transom. Yes, sir, he's going to go places. He sure is. Oh, let me at that piano. I'm raring to go. Wait a minute. I'll take the cover off. Here, give me a hand. Mary, come here. Yes, Jimmy? You know, something's been troubling me lately. What? Well, well, do you think that our love affair has enough punch to it? Huh? Our love affair. Oh, well... Jimmy, now that you mentioned it. Because I've got a new arrangement on it. Look, Our Love Affair by Jimmy Connors. Oh. Oh, it's a dynamite love song. It's, it's just made to order for you. I'll play it. Uh, wait, wait till you get a load of this intro. It's got some chords that are really out of this world. Now listen. It starts off a little flary. Are you listening to me? Sure, sure. Uh, then it uh, softens down here. Violins, you know. Then the orchestra sneaks back in for the vocal. Like this. Now listen. Our Love Affair. We'll be such fun, we'll be the envy of everyone. Those famous lovers, we'll make them forget. From Adam and Eve to Scarlet and Red. Flutes and oboes, when youth has had its merry fling, we'll spend our evening remembering to happy people. Who say on the square with fiddles, isn't ours a lovely love affair? Now, come on, you try it, huh? Jimmy, are you sure you want me to sing with the band? You're not... Why, of course not. We need you, Mary. You're as important to me as the brass section. That's pretty important. Well, come on now, try it, huh? Here we go. Our love affair was meant to be it's me for you, dear, and you for me will fuss and quarrel and tears start to brew. But after the tears, our love will smile through. I'm sure that I could never hide 
the thrill I get when you're by my side and when we're older we'll proudly declare was the dark a lovely love Gee, Mary, you're swell. Oh, it's a swell song. Oh, but with you singing it like that at the dance, we'll be a sensation. You know, there's only one thing it lacks to make everything perfect. What's that, Jimmy? Oh, you'd, you'd, you'd think I was silly if I was to mention it. Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. Really, I wouldn't. What would make it all perfect, Jimmy? Huh? Oh, uh, a xylophone. Oh. Uh, well, good night, Mary. Good night. Again, now let's get together on it. We got a dance to play here tonight. People are paying money. Okay, Jimmy, we'll get well, it. Well, come on then. One, two. Willie, Willie, will you hold the ladder while I hook these balloons up? Sure, Mary. Hi, Mary. Hello, Annie. Say, how you doing with Jimmy? Oh, I don't know. Honestly, Annie, I'm discouraged. You know, it does something to a girl's spirit to keep on fighting a losing battle to a snare drum. Well, just keep holding out, Mary. You win. Thanks. Mary? Yes, Willie? Mary, I don't think Jimmy Connors appreciates you. Why, Willie? I mean it. Gee, if I were Jimmy Connors, I'd tell the whole world you were my girl. Oh, well, that's why all the girls love you, Willie. Yeah, but who wants all the girls? Leave your music on the stands and don't forget 8 o'clock sharp and everybody with a clean shirt. Hey, hey, Jimmy. Jimmy, I can't make it at 8 o'clock. I have to pick up Annie. You have to pick up Annie? Well, gee, Jimmy. Look, fella, you're going to play a saxophone or you're going to keep your mind on the gal? Somebody else will have to pick her up. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. But Jimmy, listen. Hey, hey, Mary. Mary, Mary, can I see you? Yes, Jimmy? Uh, Mary, I've got to get here early and help them set up so I won't be able to stop by for you. Oh. Uh, how about it, Willie? Will you bring Mary for me? Oh, yeah. You sure. don't mind coming with Willie, do you? No, no, of course not. Well, that's swell. I'll, I'll see you tonight. Yes, yeah, so long. I always have a wonderful time when I'm with Willie. <laughs> Don't I, Willie? Yeah. And I always wind up with a pat on the head. Hey, Phil. It's a swell gate, isn't it? Terrific. Come on, give it, fellas. Give. Oh, I love to dance with you, Mary. Thank you, Willie. Gee, you know, I feel dandy. Uh... Couldn't we go someplace where we could, well, sort of be alone? Oh, now, Willie, you'll be a good boy. Remember what I told you? You know, Mary, I was studying up on Napoleon. Did you know he was a very short man? Oh, <laughs> Willie. Listen to that. We're in, fellas, we're in. Wasn't that a swell dance last night, Mom? <laughs> it certainly was. Oh, be careful with those dishes, Jimmy, and dry them off well. Yeah, sure. But you should have heard what Mr. Judd said about the van. Oh, he's a swell guy. Oh, oh, oh. Jimmy, be careful. You know, you've been nearly dropping that platter ever since you were six years old. <laughs> I've come much closer to it than that. Oh, uh, Mom. Yes, dear. Mom, when do mothers stop thinking about their sons as being little boys? I guess never, Jimmy. That's the fun of being a mother. Mom, look, some, someday, whenever you want anything, all you're going to have to do is just ask for it. No worries, no landlord, no store. I'm never going to stop until you've had ten days of happiness for every one of those tough ones. You know, Jimmy, parents live through their children. If you're happy, I'm happy. If you're successful, then I'll be a success. Mom, you're, you're worried about me, aren't you? Well, well, look, you don't have to worry about me because a lot of times a guy does things that people can't understand. Things crawl around inside of them that nobody in the whole world can understand. What is it, Jimmy? Mom, you and Dad, you wanted me to be a doctor, and after we lost him, you, you wanted it even more so. That's why it makes so tough for me to tell you that, that I can't. Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry I could almost fall inside, but it's just not there. Why, Dad loved medicine. He loved every little part about it. That's why he was such a fine doctor. And the way he loved medicine, that's the way I love music. Why, when I'm sitting there at the drums, I feel as though I'm in the right place. I, I feel as though I belong there. And that's what I want to do. 
You want to be a drummer in an orchestra. Well, that's part of music, Mom. It's rhythm, and, well, gee, it's been beating around in my mind ever since I can remember. Oh, I'm sure you'd understand if you thought about it as much as I did. If you only knew, Jimmy, how much we thought about it. Why, since before you were born, it started. Your father and I prayed you'd be a boy just for that reason. And to the very end, he clung to that ideal for you, to heal. And that's such a wonderful thing, Jimmy, in a world of sick and suffering. Yeah, I know, Mom. I thought a lot about that, too, but, but it's the same way in music. When the music's happy, it makes the people happy. When it's sad, they take things out of their lives that made them sad and lose them in music. Then they feel better afterwards. Tell me, Mom, in a, in a way, isn't that sort of like healing, too? Isn't it? All right, Mom. All right. I'll be a doctor. Now, I'll, I'll be a good doctor. Jimmy. Yes, Mom? I was wrong when I said that a mother never stops thinking of her son as a little boy. Why, there's always that time when a mother sees her son before her with a mind of his own, a world of his own, and a heart of his own. And it's then that she realizes whether she's made a success or a failure of her son as a boy. Just now I saw it. And I knew that I was proud of my boy. Oh, Mom. You could be a doctor, Jimmy, a good doctor. But if deep down inside your ambition is to make people happy with your music, why, that's all that matters. I'm satisfied. Oh, you know, you're the most wonderful mom that ever lived. But remember, son... The top of the ladder is very appealing. And for my sake, be careful how you climb that ladder. I will. I will, Mom. And when I get there, nothing they could cook up would be too good for you. You know what? I'm going to make you a queen. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland will bring you Act Two of Strike Up the Band. And now here's our Hollywood news reporter, Libby Collins. She's ready to give us some inside information on what goes on out here in Hollywood. What's it about, Libby? Or rather, who's it about tonight? It's about Rita Hayworth, who seems to be going places these days over at Columbia. Rita Hayworth? Well, I saw her riding a bicycle down Sunset Boulevard only the other day. Yes, she bicycles for exercise. She hasn't much time for it, though, these days. She's a very busy little lady, you know. And a mighty pretty one, too, I noticed. <laughs> you and a lot of other people, Mr. Ruick. People would notice as lovely a girl as Rita anywhere. Well, tell us more about her, Libby. Well, Rita's one of many Hollywood starlets who has a very interesting background. Members of her family have been celebrated in the theater for generations, as actors or as dancers. Rita's something of a dancer herself, isn't she? Seems to me she had dancing parts in her first pictures. That's right. Only she gave up the dancing because she didn't want to be tight. Hmm, smart girl, Rita. She'll go places. Wait till you see her in her latest picture, Angels Over Broadway. I'm certainly going to do that very thing. And here's a piece of news you'll be specially interested in, Mr. Ruick. Lux Toilet Soap Active Lather Facials are a part of Rita's daily beauty care. She says she depends on them to help her skin stay soft and smooth, the way it must be for camera close-ups. Well, Rita's like many other Hollywood stars, Libby. They like active lather facials because they really work. Now, here's the way you take the Lux Toilet Soap Active Lather Facial. First, you pat the rich active lather lightly in. Rinse with warm water, a dash of cool, and then pat lightly to dry. Lux Toilet Soap is gentle and thorough. And you'll find these facials leave skin feeling so smooth and soft, looking so fresh. Why not try active lather facials for 30 days and see what they can do for you. Now, our producer, Mr. William C. DeMille. Act two of Strike Up the Band, starring Mickey Rooney as Jimmy Connors and Judy Garland as Mary Holden, with John Scott Trotta as Paul Whiteman. Dawn of the following morning found the maestro of Riverwood High up and stirring after a night of excited sleep. 7 a.m. found him reading the morning paper. At 7.02, his eyes bulged as he read a certain item. 
And now, at 7.05, he's flying toward Mary's backyard, his baggy trousers whipping out behind him in the breeze. Hey, Mary! Mary! Ah! Hey, Mary! Mary! Excitement. Mary, give me a mountain. I want to crush it into a mole here. Well, who's been feeding you vitamins? Mary, I've got the greatest hunk of news since the invention of the wheel. Look, I just found this little piece of, in the newspaper. Paul Whiteman, America's number one band leader, has decided due to the great wave of interest among the youth of America in modern music to give the auditions to the high school dance orchestras in the various cities he is now playing. Now, now this is the important part. Mr. Whiteman's final selection will be guest starred on his weekly program on November 2nd from Chicago. Oh, well, that is something. Oh, but, Jimmy, it would cost a fortune to get that whole band to Chicago. No, 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 no. I, I figured it out. To get the band there and back my bus in two days in Chicago, it'll cost about uh, $200. <laughs> that's if nobody eats heavy. <laughs> oh, now, Jimmy, that's, that's an awful lot of money, even if we had it. Yeah, it, it is quite a bundle. But it's not impossible. Hmm. Say, when's bank night? <laughs> You're pressing. Yeah. Say, uh, suppose we went over and uh, we had a little talk with... Uh... Mr. Judd. Sure, the school board will do anything he says. Besides, he was crazy about our band last night. Well, we ought to get him while he's in a good humor. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on! <laughs> Uh, th there's the proposition, Mr. Judd. Publicity for the school, everything. What do you say? Definitely no. Oh. He said no, and I said oh, and that finished it. But there's more than one way of spinning a top, Phil. Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking it over all day. Now, how can we raise $200? Yeah. You know, Jimmy, I think Annie's good and sore. She's really burned up all right. Annie. Annie! Annie! Is that all I get out of you is Annie? Aren't you interested in the band? Oh, sure, Jimmy. Well, I'm... don't you realize, Phil, we've only got six weeks to raise the money to get the kids to Chicago? This is a terrific thing. This isn't just baby talk. Oh, I'm with you, Jimmy, all the way. You know well, that. Well, all right, all right. Oh, well, how are we going to do it? How about some punch boards? Punch boards? Sure, sure, and... And we'll give Annie away as the prize. All right. <laughs> all right, if you're going to be a oh, wise guy. Oh, I was only kidding, Phil. Hey, wait a minute. Why couldn't we make a deal with the Elks Club to give a dance at their Milk Fund Bazaar? It's only a month away. Oh, they don't give dances at any... Hey, hey, that's not a bad idea. We could put on our own show. That'd be different. We could make up our own specialties and sketches and dance routines. Great, I like it already. Say, uh, what's the number one elk? The, 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 the whatchamacallit, the... Mr. Mollison. And he owes my dad money. That's our man. Get after him right away. Yeah. You know what, Jimmy? What? I think I ought to call Annie. Oh, are you making valentines again? Well, wait till you're in love with somebody. You'll know what I'm going through. Ah, uh, women to me, Phil, are just people. Quiet, please. The class will please come to order. The problem is marked on the blackboard. Get to work. Hey, Jimmy. This algebra gets me down. Did you get the answer to the last one? Don't bother me. I'm busy. Hey, that ain't algebra. Shut up, will you? I'm working on a lyric for the show. Miss Hodges. Oh, good morning, Mr. Judd. I'm sorry to disturb you, but I'd like you to meet a new student of ours, Barbara Francis Morgan. How do you do, Barbara Francis? I'm delighted to know you, Miss Hodges. Hey, Jimmy, look at the new girl. Don't annoy me, will you? Sure oh, you she beautiful. Just look at her once. Listen, I told Barbara. you that women don't I'm interest sure me. Well, you can look, okay. can't you? All right. Where is she? You mean that girl up on the... Whew. Wow! Oh, uh, James. Uh, yes, ma'am? James, I wonder if you'd take Barbara Francis to the supply room and help me with her textbook. Hello. <laughs> Would it uh, inconvenience you terribly? Uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> that This way. <laughs> <laughs> That's your work, class. I guess that's all the books you need. Thank you. Uh, tell me, have you traveled very much? Uh, uh, traveled? Well, a, a little. That is, my uncle took me to Chicago three years ago to see the World Series. Oh, no, I mean the continent. Which one? Oh, you <laughs> must see the Riviera. Must I? I met the most wonderful man there, almost too beautiful, but he turned out to be a duke, and you know what they are. <laughs> yeah, you got to watch those dukes. <clears throat> Well, there goes the, the bell. <clears throat> That's the last class. Oh, dear. We were just getting to know each other. Yeah. You know something? You're cute. Goodbye now. Yeah. 
Mary, can I walk you home? I'm sorry, Willie, but I have to work at the library today. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy Connors! Hey, there's that new girl. Hello, Jimmy. Were you looking for me? Well, uh, no, not exactly. Jump in, I'll drive you home in my car. Well, thanks anyway, Barbara. I don't think oh, that I can. come on. Jump in. Well, okay. Will you look at that? That Barbara gal doesn't waste any time, does she? I guess so. I guess Jimmy doesn't either. Just give me the word, Mira, and I'll slug him. Well, Willie... Don't forget, Napoleon had a whole army. Mary, are you in charge of the library today? That's right. Can I help you, Booker? Well, I just wanted to return this book. I'll leave it on the desk. Okay. Hello, Mary. Hello, Jimmy. Didn't I see you going home? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I came back. Uh, Mary, ab- about the county fair. The fair? Uh, what about it? Well, I-, I thought that you and I, we had a- an understanding that we were going together. Uh, to the fair. Yes. Well, I kind of got myself all tied up and... And, well... With that new girl? Uh, yeah. Oh. Oh, well, there was really no definite understanding that we were going together. Besides, I'm pretty busy. And fairs, they're, they're just a bunch of livestock and a merry-go-round, and I've seen all that. Besides, there are a lot more important things in the world than, than going to fairs with people. Sure, sure, sure there are. Well, I I thought I'd drop in and explain it to you. I knew you'd understand. Oh, sure, I understand. You can always count on me, Jimmy. Just the same as you could your own cousin. Yeah, and and I I appreciate it, too. Well, so long, Mary. So long, pal. All the big professors state That everything should have a mate Birds and bees and flowers and trees All have romantic tendencies So far I have missed the heat That fate decreed was meant for me I'm just living in a lull And I'll confess It's mighty dull Romeo had Juliet and Louis the Sixteenth had Antoinette, but I ain't got nobody, and nobody's got me. Thalius had Melisande, and Isabella had Ferdinand, but I ain't got nobody, and no. Nobody's got me. Welsh grape juice has Irene Rich. Minneapolis has St. Paul. Abercrombie has his bitch. But here I am crying and sitting and sighing with no one at all. Every Jack has got his Jill. Lux toilet soap has C.B. DeMille, but I ain't got nobody, and nobody's got me. Hit Bozo on the head with a baseball and you win a cupid. Hey, give me three more balls. There you are, son. But, Jimmy, you're just wonderful. Oh, I'll hit that guy yet. Hit him, Jimmy. Jimmy. Hey, hey, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Willie. What are you doing here? Listen, Mary says you got to come back to town. we got a date with Mr. Mollison about putting on the show. Hey, give me some more balls. Right here, son. Hit Bozo and win a cupid. Hey, Willie, hold my coat, huh? Hey, okay, but you got to come along, I Jimmy. will, I will. Just let me hit this guy once so I can get a cupid doll for Barbara. Oh, Jimmy, you're so sweet. Uh, and he missed Bozo again. Oh, I got to go, Jimmy. And missed him again. Hey, Jimmy. Oh, I'll get him this time. He can't do it. He can't hit both of the Dodger. Oh, all right, I quit. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, I'm sorry, Barbara. That guy dodges too fast. Say, how much do I owe you, mister? A dollar and a quarter. All right, as soon as I get my wallet. All right, and... Hey. Hey. Hey, where, where's my wallet? Are you kidding? Now I'm going to get that wallet routine, huh? Uh, honest, mister, it was in my coat pocket. Willie. 
Oh, oh, where's Willie? He left, Jimmy. Well, hey, Willie! Okay, we know how to handle guys like you. Now, hey, well, wait a minute, will you? I'll, I'll get the money. No, no, you won't. You'll work out that dough. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? Listen, when a guy orders a meal in a restaurant and he can't pay, what does he do? Well, he washes dishes. Yeah. And when a guy throws a buck and a quarter's worth of balls at Bozo and can't pay, what does he do? Well, I guess he... No, yeah. no, no, no. No, mister, you you can't do that to me. Hey, hey, hey. Bozo! Take the afternoon no. off. This guy's taking your place. All right, let me go. Let me. Come on, come on, kids. Stick no, your head through that hole. Come on, get let in there. Let me go. Will you? Oh. All right, folks. Oh. It's the new boat, oh. though. Oh, it's the new boat, though. I'm going to it all. He's new. Hello, Jimmy. I thought I heard you out here. Hello, Mary. Are you... Are you very mad? Yes, I'm pretty mad. Did Barbara enjoy the fair? I don't know. What's that bandage on your head? Ow. She didn't hit you in the head, did she? No, I... I got hit with a baseball. In the football season? Well, it was out of season. No. Oh. But, but look, Phil... Phil told me how great you were with Mr. Mollison and the Elks Committee. And... Well, we had to do it today. You weren't here. No, I I wasn't here. I want a great band. I want them to be a success more than anything in the world. And I go rolling off like a rubber tire just when they need me. Why do I do things like that? Because you're stubborn, that's why. Just because you got on a pair of long pants, you think you know everything. Well, why don't you tell me when me? I go... Me? Look, you're going to have to figure out your own problems. After all, you can't carry somebody around for the rest of your life to keep telling you when you get off the track. Can you? No, 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 I can't do anything like that. It's, it's just that I thought that maybe you and me, we could work in a little closer cooperation with each other, that's all. You mean sort of like a pal? No, no, it's a little more than just a pal. Well, what I mean is, Mary, that well, couldn't you be my girl without, without us getting silly about it? Oh, you... You're going to have to work out your own personal problems. From now on, we're business partners. And whatever we do together is for the success of the band. But let's keep very impersonal about the whole thing. Sure, sure, if, if that's the way you want it, Mary. Well, then we've got to move fast. Yeah. Do you remember the day we were up in the attic looking at all those old-fashioned clothes my mother and dad used to wear? Yeah. And remember the melodrama we wrote with all those old things in it, but we never got a chance to put it on? Oh, sure, Well, that's it. That's the show I told Mr. Mollison about. You did? Uh-huh. Well, what did he say? He thought it was great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, it's going to be more than wonderful. It's, it's going to be the greatest thing that ever hit Riverwood. <laughs> oh, my hero, you have saved me. Ursus, I've been foiled again. Come to my arms, my dog. Oh, my hero. Moral, love, triumph over all. <laughs> Well, I didn't. Gee, I thought they'd never... Oh, it was great, folks, great. They tore up the joints. Oh, oh. Well, what's the matter, Willie? I hurt my arm in that last scene when you yanked me up on the wire. Oh. Here, let me take a look at no, it. No, no, leave it alone. It's okay. It's just a little sore. That's... Well, the kid, you better go and put it to bed. Hey, Mary. Mary, you were great. <laughs> thanks, Jimmy. You were swell, too. Oh, thanks. You're coming over to the house with the rest, aren't you? Why, I'd, I'd like to. That's if you're not too tired. Oh, no. Well, you know, you've got to take good care of yourself. <laughs> I will. Can I speak to you? Oh, oh, hello, Barbara. Come over here. Yeah, sure, sure. I just wanted to tell you how good you were, Jimmy. Uh, thanks. Well, I've uh, oh, got a... Oh, Jimmy, Dad's giving me a party at the country club next Saturday night. Will you come? Uh, why, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd love to. That's if I'm going to be in town. Oh, I'm I so glad. The only trouble is I haven't been able to make up my mind about the music. You, you mean you haven't hired a band yet? No. Oh, well, may, maybe I could help you. You might drive home with me and talk to Dad. He'll be there. Oh, I hate to spoil your evening. Oh, no, 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 not at all. Hey, kids, Hello. I'll see you later. I got some important business to attend to. Hey, Willie, take care of Mary, will you? Jimmy, wait. I, I won't be long, Mary. Jimmy. Well, there he goes again. Yeah, some bird just got to be shot twice before they stop flying. <laughs> No more, thanks. <clears throat> this is my favorite room in the house. It's, it's so cozy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, now, look, about that dance... Someday I'm going to have uh, an enormous yacht. Wouldn't you love to go to the South Seas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It uh, might be nice in the wintertime. There aren't very many good-looking boys in this town, either. <coughs> <coughs> What's the matter? 
let it. So I, I just just got something tangled in my pipe. <clears throat> you know, Jimmy, when I look back and remember the thousands of dates I've had with so many different boys, when I think of the time I've wasted, the empty hours. Oh, uh, I, I I wouldn't say that. I... Don't move away, Jimmy. Uh, look, I I think I'd better. James, do you really want to kiss me? Hmm. Is it... Barbara. Oh, who's that? It's my <coughs> father. Hello, Dad. Hello, darling. Well, what's this? Another young man? I want you to meet a very talented musician and, and one of my dearest friends, James Connors. Oh, how are you? How do you do, Mr. Morgan? James has the most wonderful orchestra in the whole world, and he's volunteered to play for my birthday party for only $50. Isn't that just wonderful? Oh, well, that's very nice of you, Mr. Connors, but, uh, Barbara, I wish I'd known about this before. Why, Dad? Well, I'm afraid I've made other arrangements. I've already signed the contract. Oh, I... I see. But we uh, want you to come to the party, and you can bring your whole orchestra. And every day you get a chance to hear Paul Whiteman. Paul Whiteman? Yes. He'll be winding up his tour near here and... Uh... Well, Paul Whiteman in Riverwood? Yes. Oh, well, 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 well thanks, thanks. We'll, we'll, we'll be there. Just just try and keep us away. <laughs> well, well, goodbye. I, I gotta go now. Oh, let's open the chair. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I didn't even see it. Oh, no, 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 I'm fine. I'm great. Uh, I'm glad to have met you, Mr. Morgan. You too, Barbara. I, I, I mean, Mr. Morgan. Well, uh, well thanks. Goodbye. <laughs> Paul Whiteman in Riverwood. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille and our stars, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland, will bring you Act Three of Strike Up the Band. And now let's see if Sally here is alert and on her toes this evening. I'm going to ask her a question. You ready, Sally? Yes, Professor Ruick. Sally, can you define the word quality? Oh, that's easy. Um, quality is defined as, um, well, it's, uh, um, well, you see, it's, <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Looks like a zero for you tonight, Sally. But I'll help you out. Here's how the dictionary defines it. Quality is a distinctive trait or virtue, excellence of character. Oh. Why, that's just what I was going to say, Mr. Ruick. <laughs> yes, you were. But seriously, Sally, now that you know what the official definition is, can you think of any other way of defining quality? Why, um... Oh, yes. Lux toilet soap. Lux toilet soap means quality to thousands of its users everywhere. Well, it is quality. You're absolutely right, Sally. And for that answer, you can go straight to the head of the class. Lux toilet soap means quality because it's as fine a soap as money can buy. Well, it's as fine a beauty soap as money can buy. That's why nine out of ten famous screen stars depend on it. They've found that daily facials with Lux toilet soap's active lather are a wonderful aid in keeping skin nice and smooth and soft. Thousands of women have learned that active lather facials are such an easy, quick beauty care, too. It takes only a minute or two each night. And then you go to bed feeling sure you've given your complexion the gentle, thorough protection it needs. You can depend on active lather to remove stale cosmetics, every trace of dust and dirt. It's thorough and yet gentle. Lux toilet soap is made of the finest, purest ingredients. It has a quality all of its own, a quality that has established it as the beauty soap of Hollywood screen stars, the world's loveliest women. Now, won't you, too, make this soap with active lather your beauty soap? Buy three cakes of Lux toilet soap and begin tomorrow to discover what this gentle, thorough beauty care can mean to you. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. Curtain rises on the third act of Strike Up the Band. The dance at the country club has brought the world-famous Paul Whiteman and his orchestra to Riverwood. On the club veranda, Mary stands in the shadows listening. She is alone, as usual. Then... She notices a quiet figure near the porch steps. Hello, Lily. What are you doing out here? 
Oh, nothing. Well, come on inside and let's dance. No, thanks. Willie, you've acted awfully funny ever since the night of the show. You're not mad at anything, are you? Oh, no, I'm not mad. Oh, well, that's well. Come on, then. Oh, Willie, oh. what's wrong? It, it's just my arm. It hurts something off. Your arm? Well, where? Don't, don't touch it. Willie, have you seen a doctor? Oh, they don't know nothing. Oh, Willie, that's very foolish. If something's wrong, you should have it looked at. Promise me you'll go see a doctor tomorrow morning. Okay, I'll go, but it won't do any good. Mary, where are you? Here, Mary. here, Phil. Oh, Mary, Mary, come inside quick. We're going to give an audition for Mr. Whiteman. What? Did he say so? No, he doesn't know it. The orchestra's out for a smoke, and Jimmy got the idea. We're going to get up on that fan stand and give out ourselves. Oh, we can't do that. We're doing it. Come on, he wants you to take the vocal. Let's go. Come over here, will you? Yes, sir. You want, you want to see me? Yes. My name's White. Yeah, I, I know, Mr. Whiteman. I, I guess I ought to apologize for taking Never over like that. Never mind that now. Stick around after we finish. I want to speak to you. Mom! Mom! Are you awake? Why, Jimmy, what on earth? Mom, it's happened. I told you it would. We're on our way. I got a job. A job? Why, Jimmy, what do you mean? Mr. Whiteman heard our band tonight. Paul Whiteman, Mom, and he's offered me a regular job with an orchestra in New York. All our troubles are over. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so glad for you, son. And I'm so proud. Oh, God, Mom, just think of it. New York. Just you, Jimmy? Not the rest of the band? Well, all he needed was a drummer. I see. Well, I wonder what they'll say. Why, they'll... Why? Everybody's looking forward so to going to Chicago. Everybody's been working so hard. Working for the whole group. Yeah, I, I know what you're thinking, but... Do you? I remember when you started the band, when you told me that they believed in you, had faith in you, would stick by you. What suddenly becomes of them now? They're the same people. But this is my one big chance. I... I can't give it up. Don't ask me to. You'd be climbing the first rung of the ladder by walking out on your friend. Yeah, I... I know it now. I, I can see it. I, I guess I just didn't stop to think. I, I just thought it would be so wonderful for both of us. And so it can be, Jimmy. But not quite so fast. Yeah, I guess you're right. Where are you going, son? You know where I'm going. I'm going to tell Mr. Whiteman that the deal is... What you're trying to tell me is that you can't take the job... Is that it? Yes, sir. I thought I could, but I just got to talk to my mother, and well, she straightened me out on a few things. Mothers have a knack at that sort of thing, don't they, Jimmy? Yes, sir. You know, Jimmy, after listening to a lot of young bands all over the country, I don't think it would be fair to select just one band. There are too many good ones. So I'm going to devote my whole program to a high school band contest. And, Jimmy, I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to let the public worry about who's best. Gosh, that sounds terrific, Mr. White. I've already selected three bands... I think I'll make it four. Do you want to try? Do we? Chicago, Saturday night. Will you be there? Why, why you couldn't keep us away. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, I, I forgot, Mr. Whiteman. It's going to cost us $200 to get the band to Chicago, and well, we've only got 150 Mr. Whiteman, do you think you could see your way clear to give me a loan of $50? I'll, I'll give you my personal note, and, and 
Well, I, I could put my drums up at security. They mean more to me than anything in the world. You'd really do that, Jimmy? Yes, I would, Mr. Whiteman. It's a deal. Oh, gosh, thanks. Hey, Mary! Mary! Mary, wait up. I can't, Jimmy. I'm in a hurry. Uh, listen, I did it. I got the $200. We're leaving for Chicago Friday night. That's great, Jimmy. Wonderful. Well, wait up, will you? What's the rush? Mrs. Brewster just phoned a Willie's sick. The doctor's there, and she wants me to come over right away. Willie's sick? Why, is it serious? I guess it is all right. Well, let's get going. What's the matter with Willie? How serious is it, Doctor? Well, from what I can gather, he must have injured his arm when he was swung up on that wire during your show. His arm? Yes. And unfortunately, what was a simple fracture then has developed into a serious complication now. Well, what are you doing for him, Doc? There's not much I can do, Jimmy. Unless that boy is operated on within the next few hours, I... I can't be responsible for him. Oh, no. Well, well... We've got to do something. I've phoned the best orthopedic man I know, Dr. Lynn, at the General Hospital in Chicago. But he's operating today and can't possibly get away. We'd have to take Willie to Chicago immediately. Well, all right, let's take him there. Couldn't we charter a plane? Uh, that would cost a lot of money, Mary. I'm afraid that Mrs. Brewster could hardly afford that. Well, how much would it cost, Doctor? About $200. Mm-hmm. Call the airport. We have the money. Two hundred dollars? Sure, right here in my pocket. What are you waiting for? All right, I'll take care of it. Doctor. Yes? Could we see Willie now, please? Yes, I think you should. Go right in. Hi, you, Willie. Hello. I heard what you just said out there, and I'm not going. Going where? In that airplane. Oh, but, but you've got to go. I know where you're getting the money, and you're not going to spend it on me. Oh, what's money? It's like corny saxophone players. You can shake it out of trees. Look, Willie. I'm your friend, aren't I? Yeah. And Jimmy's your friend, too, isn't he? Yeah. Well, have we ever asked you to do anything that wasn't good for you? Look, Willie. Jimmy's the boss, and, and the only reason we've gotten anywhere with the band is because we've listened to him. And everybody's always done what he's asked us to. Even hard things. Things that we sometimes didn't agree with, but... But the only reason the band has done anything, the play and the dance, well, those were little things. And now, don't you see, Willie? You're giving us a, a chance to do a big thing. Why, to Jimmy and me and, and every person in the band, you're more important than all the broadcasts in the world. We've got the rest of our lives to do broadcast. Look, Willie, I, I know you'll do it because I know you won't let us down. You'll do it, won't you, Willie? I, I always wanted to ride in an airplane. Riverwood boy undergoes operation. There it is in the paper, Barbara. I read it. He's going to get well, too, and it's all because of Jimmy Connors. So you've said before. Mr. Connors is here, sir. Well, show him in. Yes, sir. This way, please. Thank you. Hello, Jimmy. Oh, hello, Mr. Morgan. Hello, Barbara. Hello. Had your breakfast? Uh, no, thanks. I don't care for anything to eat. Well, uh, sit down. Thank you, sir. Tell me, what time is Mr. Whiteman's broadcast tonight? Oh, uh, 8 o'clock. Well, think you could win that contest? I know we could if we were there. How long would it take you to get your band together and get out of town? A half an hour? Easy. Why? Because there's a special train pulling into the yards in three quarters of an hour, and I want you to be on it. You mean that? Oh, you're, you're kidding me. I'm not kidding. Now get going and strike up the band. Oh, Mr. Morgan. I... Well, uh, thanks. I'll get the fellas and I'll... Oh, thanks a lot. Get the chair. So long, Mr. Morgan. Come on, Mary. All everybody. Get Pablo, here we come. Goodbye, Jimmy. Be careful. Goodbye, Mom. Do you think we're going to be the best? Everybody in Riverwood thinks so. Well, then we will be. You know what, Mom? What, Jimmy? I'm going to make you a queen. Goodbye.
Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. For the past hour, you have been listening to four of the leading high school bands of our country, competing for the prize offered on this program. I want to thank you for your votes by phone and telegram, because it was your votes which helped us pick the winner. And now here it is, a name you're probably hearing for the first time tonight, but it's a name that may become a musical byword. Jimmy Connors and his band. <laughs> Here you are, Jimmy. This trophy belongs to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whiteman. Oh, Jimmy, it's wonderful. Gosh, aren't you thrilled, Mary? Here, this trophy should have gone to you. Me? Oh, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whiteman. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, I... I guess this is it. I don't have to tell you how I feel. If I felt any better, I couldn't stand it. You know, when something wonderful like this happens to anybody, I suppose you ought to thank somebody. They're not here, but I, I know they're listening in. Mr. Judd, I was all wrong about you. You'll always be a swell guy with us because you said, I'll buy the first ticket. And as for you, Willie, even though you're in love with my girl, I, I want you to know that we're all thinking about you and we want you to hurry up and get out of bed because we all need you. And Mom, I, I don't know what I was thinking about when I said that someday I'd make you a queen because if you hadn't been a queen all the time, I'd never be here now. Thank you. Our love affair was meant to be. It's me for you, dear, and you for me. We'll fuss and quarrel and tears start to brew. But after the our love will smile through When you have had its merry fling We'll spend our evenings remembering Two happy people who say on the square It's a bit amazing how Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland learned so much about acting at their age, but here they are for a well-earned curtain call, a leading man and leading lady. Huh. How do you like that, Mickey? You're a leading man. Say, that's okay, and you're a leading lady. How long have you been acting, Mickey? Well, quite a long time, Mr. DeMille. I was in a vaudeville act with my folks when I was 11 months old. <laughs> Did you have a good part, Mickey, or just a walk-on? Well, <laughs> to tell the truth, Judy, it was sort of a um, carry-on, you know. Eleven months old? Well, what was the part? Happy New Year. I don't get it. You don't get it? No. Well, you know, the kid in the three-cornered pants, Happy New Year, you know? Boy, you certainly are versatile. Oh, oh I don't know. It was just the type in those days. Now, Judy, I think we ought to tell Mr. DeMille that we had a swell time in the Lux Radio Theater this week. That's right. It was grand, Mickey. Well, I'm a stranger here myself, but I'll give you a message to my little brother, Cecil. <laughs> and I want to tell the audience something about Lux Soap, too. You know, I use it all the time to take care of my complexion, and, well, I think Lux Soap is swell. I guess a lot of other people think so, too. You've got a point there, Judy. As a matter of fact, literally millions of cakes of Lux toilet soap are purchased every week in the year by the women of this country. And, of course, a great big feather in our cap is the fact that out here in Hollywood, nine out of ten famous screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. But speaking of good things, the Lux Radio Theater has a rare treat in store for us next Monday night. And now I'll ask C.B. in New York to tell us about next week's play. Come in, Cecil. I'm right here, Bill. And I've certainly spent a delightful evening on the audience side of our footlights tonight. Next Monday night... We're going to present the classic story, Wuthering Heights. And our stars are Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone. It's a great love story, a tense, exciting drama. 
with Ida Lupino as Kathy and Basil Rathbun as Heathcliff. Wuthering Heights was a great hit on the screen. And I believe the Lux Radio Theater will reach one of its high points of the season next Monday night. Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone in Wuthering Heights. Well, that's for me. How about you, Judy? Me too. Good night. So long, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> Good night. Good night. You two, you two made it a great night for the Lux Radio Theater. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Ida Lupino and Basil Rathbone in Wuthering Heights. This is William C. DeMille saying good night to you, as my brother says, from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play with John Stockpotter as Paul Whiteman, Louis Silver's orchestra as Paul Whiteman's orchestra, Larry Nunn as Willie, Charles Peck as Philip, Betty Jean Haney as Barbara, Frederick Warlock as Mr. Morgan, Jane Morgan as Mrs. Connors, Griff Barnett as Mr. Judd, Byron Kane as Booper, Dwayne Thompson as Miss Hodges, Lou Merrill as the Barker, Harry Humphreys as the Doctor, Noreen Gamill as Miss Pink, Sue Garland as Annie, and Bud McAllister, Dick Cobler, and Anise Reese. Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro Goldwyn Mayer and are currently seen on the screen in Strike Up the Band. Our music is directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. That was the October 28th, 1940 episode of the Lux Radio Theater, Mickey Rooney and Judy Garland starring in Strike Up the Band. It was obviously still very fresh because they announced that, you know, they're, they're in the theaters right now. Where you can go to the theater and see Strike Up the Band. What strikes me, strikes me no pun intended, um, listening to that audience respond, those, those cooing and, and cheering for them, um, what a connection they had with that young audience that was in that studio listening. Yeah, they were stars. I mean, there's a moment after Judy's solo where they the, the pl applause and laughter and cheers goes on pretty long. I think Mickey Rooney starts talking over it, and it continues for a second, which is, it, it, it's a... Tells you so much about how audiences responded specifically to her right. and how the legend of her had already started. And I'd like to mention that one of the most marvelous things about Judy, being a, a Judy uh, freak as I am, is that everything about her that made her great is already there. You can hear it, the, the control of her voice, the storytelling ability in her voice, her acting, it's already all there. And then simply as she got older, she became a more mature human being and adult things happened. So her performances got more nuanced. But the timing and the, the passion and the, the truth telling is so there. It's really impressive for such a young gal. Yeah. And what's, what's uh, rewarding, especially about this, this recording is it kind of gives you a little insight into um, what they were like when they were when MGM was sending them around the country promoting Wizard of Oz together as a team. So yeah. you get the feel of how they kind of played off each other uh, in front of a live audience as well. A absolutely right. There was um I think there's and one of the things I noticed from the film and the radio show there seems to be such a true camaraderie. And you know we can't go back in time uh, and know if it was real, but they seem to have just stayed such wonderful friends mm -hmm. and so like war buddies a little bit, you know, living through being professional children yeah. and all the abuse that they took, both of them really. And they, they seem to, you can almost hear in their voices the way they talk to each other, that they're holding hands and doing it together. It's really wonderful. Yeah. You, it, it became a bit of a joke later, but you do understand why Mickey Rooney always would, even in his old age and his, his dotage a bit, would bring her up all the time. I was a star with Judy and Judy and I and Judy and I, but you, you, you do find there, it, it was genuine. There was, there was genuine brother-sister love that was there. I, I agree, and that's it. Uh, somebody, I was, I watched the movie recently with the person I'm staying with here in Rhode Island, and we sort of wondered if they ever were in a relationship, you know, yeah. like a romantic relationship. Uh -huh. And I've read anything about that. I don't think they were. I do think it was a, a big brother, little sister relationship, and that they experienced so many of the same things. Right. I was really blown away by the radio play for a couple of reasons, too. The, the verisimilitude. I mean, I literally sounded like they had just taken 
the film and we're playing scenes. But um, you were saying that it it's all was all done live. Yeah, yeah, from start to finish. Uh, and interesting how they would drop in little things where they would mention Cecil, uh, Cecil B. DeMille and things like yeah. that, you know. Um, yes. just, and just the strange part of John Scott Trotter playing Paul Whiteman. Really, Paul was busy? I mean, I, I probably, apparently he was. He, he wasn't able to show up. But even that would just seem strange that they just didn't, you know, change it to being John Scott Trotter as, you know, he still had to play who he was playing. But you were mentioning that, that there's relationships. There's somebody within the film who also is connected with somebody today? Yes, well, um, well, 80s anyway, for my 80s babies out there. Uh, I looked up the actor who plays uh, Willie who's the boy whose arm uh, yeah. hurt. And I believe, his last name is Nunn. I believe it's Larry. I don't have a, I don't have a right in front of me. But then I saw, I, I Googled him to find out a little bit more about him because I thought he was so wonderful in both the film and the radio. Mm -hmm. um, incredibly consistent in both. Um, and his daughter is Terry Nunn, who was the lead singer of a band called Berlin, whose <laughs> big was called Riding on the Metro. Yeah. And then, did the big ballad from Top Gun, Take My Breath Away. Oh my God. That was interesting. Yeah. So it wasn't only Judy Garland who had famous and talented children uh, exactly. from this production. <laughs> I really loved I really loved the radio show and I appreciated one thing specifically, and this is my own take on it. And I'm curious about other people's or your take on it, is I found that the in the movie the sequence, the melodrama sequence, mm -hmm. uh, did not hold my attention in a way that it might have held an audience back then in which that was only 40 or 50 years old, that kind of performance, because it went charming at first and it went on way too long for me in the film as a contemporary watcher. And I've seen the film many times. I appreciate it in the radio play. It was about 1 20th as long. Yeah. And I, I appreciated the brevity of it. I got the point. <laughs> yeah, we didn't need any more. Well, this was such a pleasure to talk about this film and, and these two incredible performers. And I know your love for Judy Garland, and it certainly seems to extend to Mickey Rooney as well. Uh, so thank you for your, your guidance as we kind of uh, revisited this wonderful little piece of nostalgia here. Thank you for giving me a chance to kibitz about it. I love it. Thank you, Mitchell. Theaters across the country need your support now, more than ever. We hope you'll consider a donation to Porchlight Music Theater today. Just go to porchlightmusictheater.org. Until next time on Classic Musicals from the Golden Age of Radio, I'm Michael Weber.